Okay, grade 11, let's look at this question from Doc and Chair. It's question 7 on page 219. This question looks a lot more like an ordinary exam question and you need a little bit of insight to answer it. This is going to tie into next year we do reaction rates. These curves will look a lot like that. So what they've said to you is they've got two samples of copper carbonate with equal mass. One is pure, one is impure and they react it with hydrochloric acid. So what they do is they've got a picture of a setup similar to this over here. And as you can see, there's, they're on a scale, which they call a balance. It's the other name for a scale. They've put the flask on the scale and they've put a little bud of cotton wool in the top of the flask. And what happens is this reaction, it's the standard reaction, a metal salt plus an acid, a metal salt, a metal carbonate, plus an acid gives you a salt, water and carbon dioxide gas. This is one of the general reactions you're supposed to learn. So here what happens is the carbon dioxide gas is being given off here and it can escape through the cotton wool but everything else can't. You put the cotton wool in there so that if any of this liquid, because this is going to bubble, obviously effervescence when carbon dioxide is released, so when the gas starts bubbling out, you don't want any of the liquid to bubble out. So the cotton wool is there to keep the, um, the, the uh, liquid in, but let the gas out. So what happens is carbon dioxide has a mass. We don't tend to think of gas as having a mass, but this is why we do these calculations. The carbon dioxide has a mass. This is an incredibly sensitive scale. And this is one of the reasons why we say this is like gravimetric analysis, because we're using the scale to find the answer. So out comes the gas out of here and everything gets lighter as the gas escapes. So they say to you we've got a pure and an impure sample and if you look on the graph here, the one is the dotted line, the one is the solid line. And you can see we started out, the mass of the flask and the contents was 170 grams and we ended up down here, we would have to read it carefully off the graph. So all of this weight loss is actually attributable to all of the carbon dioxide coming out the top of the beaker here. So we're then going to um, answer all the questions based on this. The only thing we know in here when, when you read the question is um, to figure out how much carbon dioxide has gone from the scale. So if we have a look at the questions, it says to you, explain why the mass of the flask with its contents decreases. Okay, so this is due to the loss of carbon dioxide. I'm just going to write it in shorthand so that we aren't six hours on this question. So that's due to the loss of carbon dioxide. So then it says to you, at what time did the reaction of pure, pure calcium, calcium carbonate, copper carbonate stop? How can we deduce that the reaction is finished? So if you have a look here, we know the reaction is finished when the graph goes flat. There's one thing you must notice about this graph here. Yeah? Even if they hadn't have told you which was pure and which was impure, you can actually figure it out because pure substances always react faster than impure substances. And pure substances in this particular will reaction will have given off more gas. So can you see this pure graph is much steeper than the impure graph? So even if they hadn't labeled it, I would have guessed that. And this is, this is a foster reaction rate as well. Can you see the weight is decreasing foster? For every unit of time, more mass is lost with a pure reaction than with the impure reaction. So we know it stops because the mass is not changing. And so if you read it off the graph here, because it says with the pure copper carbonate. It's very confusing because the picture in the book is calcium carbonate and we often do this with calcium carbonate but this is copper carbonate. So if you have a look here, where did it go flat? Now this is open to interpretation but anywhere from where the uh, line went flat. So often in an exam they'll make this very very obvious but you can say somewhere between 40 and 50 here. Definitely not 40, not 41. So somewhere 40, 45 seconds about 45 seconds it stopped and it's because the graph has gone flat because no more um, no more weight loss due to loss of carbon dioxide okay okay now it says to you calculate the amount of moles of carbon dioxide gas produced during the reaction with pure copper carbonate 
So to do this, we actually have to look at the graph and we have to go initial mass minus the final mass. Okay, and my initial mass is 170 grams. And my final mass, we have to read it carefully off the graph. So this is 169,7, this is 169,75. So every one of two of these blocks is going to be comma 01. So this is going to be 169,71, 169,72, 169,73. Okay, so let's work that out on our calculator. And as always, please check me up. So I've got 0, 0,27 grams. The amount of carbon dioxide, this is the mass of carbon dioxide. So now we're going to have to convert mass into moles. So N equals M over M. Remember, I can't write it as a fraction here, so we've got to live with this way that I'm doing it. So my mass here is 0, 0,27, and I'm going to divide it by, and I went earlier and found the mass of um, the relative molecular mass of carbon dioxide look over here 12 for the carbon 216 for the two oxygens gives you 44 so let's work this out I've got something that looks like 6.13 times 10 to the negative 3. I'm just using this um, star asterisk sign for a multiplication sign as well because sometimes the x looks really weird. Okay, so I get 6,13 moles of carbon dioxide. Then it says calculate the mass of copper carbonate of the pure sample. So we know that this is the um, uh, uh, moles of carbon dioxide. So we're going to go back to the balanced equation in the beginning and we're going to link copper carbonate and carbon dioxide. And now if you have a look here, this is one mole is to one mole. I don't care if that means that you already know that this answer is exactly the same as the moles of copper carbonate. You have to write down every time the molar ratio to show that you know what you are doing. So it's the molar ratio of copper carbonate to carbon dioxide. And if we have a look at this, this will be 1 is to 1. So then the moles of these will be exactly the same. Goodness, that thing is not copying and pasting what I wanted to copy and paste. Okay. So I don't know why this has suddenly decided it's got giant handwriting. Very interesting. So here are my two mole ratios. Okay. Good grief, this is really misbehaving itself. Okay, so are we fine here, ignoring the interesting typing that this is how many moles we've got? Now we need to have a look here and we need to check um, how the mass, what the mass is, because it asks you in the question, what is the mass? Remember, we always work from moles to mass and back again. So N equals M over M. So small m will be equal to N M. And this thing is still in some random font size, which is highly irritating. So we're going to use this formula and we're going to put this number in here. And we're going to multiply this because this is my N and we're going to multiply it by the relative molecular mass of copper, which is 123,5. And we should end up here 
with another number. If we do this in our calculator, I get 0, 0,757 grams of copper carbonate. Now it says calculate the percentage purity of the impure sample of copper carbonate. So in order to do this, we're going to have to do all of these steps again. We're going to have to find the number of moles of carbon dioxide that came out over here. And from there, we're going to have to convert it into a mass of copper carbonate. And then we're going to subtract the two numbers. We're going to subtract. Sorry, we're not going to subtract them. We're going to put the impure over the pure and multiply by 100 and get a fraction. So if we go for the impure copper carbonate, we first need to look the moles of carbon dioxide um, formed. That's what we need to find first. And we get it from the mass of carbon dioxide released. So we started with 170 grams and we were here 169,75. 76, 77, 78. So it's 169,78. And this is going to give me the grams So I've got 0, 0,22 grams of carbon dioxide. So my moles of carbon dioxide are going to be 0, 0,22. Now I'm not writing the formula. Remember you have to write the formula every time, but I don't want to be here for 600 hours trying to show you something simple. Okay, we're dividing by the relative molecular mass of copper. So 0, 0,22 divided by 44. We get 5 times 10 to the negative 3. Okay, so that's 0, 0,005. And then we're going to convert this. Okay, we're going to use the mole ratio. And this is exactly the same thing here. The mole ratio of copper carbonate to carbon dioxide. We have to write it again. It's 1 is to 1. Okay. And then, so this 5 times 10 to the negative 3 will be the same ratio Goodness me, this you see why this is so frustrating on the computer with the superscript and the subscript. It just keeps keeping it there. Okay, so we've now found out that we had this many moles of copper carbonate and we need to then turn this into a mass again so once more, this is highly irritating, this thing. M equals Nm. So it's 5 times 10 to the negative 3 times the rel relative molecular mass of copper carbonate, which I worked out earlier. You saw there it's 123,5. Okay. And if we put this on our calculator, I get 0, 0,6175. Now it, it's asking you to find the percentage purity. So remember percentage purity is actual yield over theoretical yield. Okay, so we'll write it the long way. Percentage purity equals actual yield. Okay, and I'm using this instead of divide over the theoretical yield, you know, instead of writing it as a fraction times 100. So my actual yield is what we've um, just found now from the impure sample, 0, 0,6175. And we're going to divide that over, what was this value we had here, 0, 0,757. Remember here, this is from the pure one. And then we're going to multiply by 100. And if we put this in our calculator, I 
I get 81,57% pure. And that should be my final answer. Okay, I hope you all followed that.